All right, since the video is getting kind of long, I'm gonna talk about spheres in this video. So let's start by talking about circles. So just going off the ideas of distance, we can talk about circles back in 2D. So recall that a circle, and this is a fine sticking point for a lot of people, the first time you really come into your misunderstanding here is this class, is the set of points a specific distance away from a center. And that distance, just to be clear, that specific distance is the radius. And that's why for a circle, the equation comes down to um, x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Notice that this is the Pythagorean theorem applied to a center h comma k and the radius r. And it's a Pythagorean theorem, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So what I was trying to say, the misconception a lot of students have is a circle is just what you would might, might call their circumference. You might have the center HK and you have all of the points a certain distance away from HK. And I know that doesn't quite look like a circle, but the circle's not filled in here. The circle's not filled in. It's just the outside of the circle. I'm emphasizing it. When we talk about the circle, it's just the points that are that much away exactly the disk is filled in. A circle is empty. Now, if you're so, sitting there shouting at the screen, like, why are you saying this so much? It's really annoying. In 3D, we'll have spheres. Now, spheres are also just a surface. It's a surface of points. A set distance or the radius away from a center. Surfaces are gonna be the main thing we study in this class, at least for a long time. It's a surface, it is not a solid. It is not a solid, it is not a solid. So we'll do the same exact trick that we did with the distance formula. We'll use a 3D Pythagorean theorem minus L squared equals R squared. And again, do not get confused. Just because we're 3D doesn't mean things are getting cubed. It's a little distance formula. The distance formula we're using is squaring things. Partially because squaring gets rid of the sign. Like that's a much better measurement for distance. We don't want to think about the sign too much. We want to think about how far they're apart. So uh, I'll say this clearly. The center now has to have three coordinates. So it's H, K, L. Notice they're all being subtracted. And the radius is still R. So I want to go over a few things of how these surfaces will end up looking. So what we're talking about here would be something like show x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 4x minus 6y plus 2z plus 6 equals 0 is a sphere. Okay, so one thing that I want you to notice for equations like this, we have all three variables present. We have all three variables present. None of the variables are mixing together. We don't have any X, Y's. We don't have any Y, Z's, stuff like that. So everything's kind of separable. We have X stuff, we have Y stuff, 
we have z stuff. Moreover, we have x squared, y squared, z squared. They're all there and present and squared. And the coefficients are equal. So all three variables present. We have uh, no variable combos, x, y, or y, z. No x times y, that's what I mean here. Not just x's and y's, but really the variable x times y. And the coefficients of x squared, y squared, and z squared are equal, are the same. Like they're all there and they all have the same coefficient. That's going to be important for being a sphere. All three of those things, it's probably going to be a sphere. We're going to talk about how other shapes looked. Just want to say that. But the method here, we're going to use complete the square. That method that you should remember to get the standard form. So what does that look like here? I'm going to gather my x stuff in blue, 4x, and then plus leave a little space, leave a little space. Then we have y stuff, I'm going to write that in red, leave a little space, and my z stuff in black, leave a little space equals, I'm moving the negative six to the other side. I'm moving this six up here. This six gets moved to the other side, subtracting six from both sides. I hope we're okay. The way we complete squares, and I'm trying to go over it because I know it's been a while. I'm not gonna have you search for that other video. We look at that number, the B term. We do four divided by two, we get two. And then we do two squared, which is four. So I'm gonna divide that middle number by two, and then I'm gonna square it to get four. That's the square part. Well, that's one of the square parts. So I'm adding a four here. Try to get the next two blanks. All right, so because I added a four there, I need to add a four to the other side. For my next blank, half of negative six is negative three but negative three squared is still positive nine. Make sure you add a positive nine to the other side. Half of two is one. One squared is one. Add a one to the other side. And now everything's balanced. Now everything is balanced. I wanna be careful here. Uh, I'll point out this really quick. This is why we would cross our Z's the hard part of multivariable calc or complex analysis is when you have Z's, if you are a student who doesn't cross the Z and you write two like this, eventually at one point, miles into a problem, you're gonna see that and think it's 22. So I'd recommend you start crossing your Z's just so you can distinguish them. End of aside. Now, when we factor this, this becomes X plus two squared over here is where the sign matters. It's y minus three squared. Minus three because negative six divided by two is negative three. And then our z terms are z plus one quantity squared. Equals what? 14 minus six is eight. So this is the equation of a sphere in standard form. The center of the sphere, careful, is negative two, positive three, negative one, and the radius of the sphere is the square root of eight or two root two. I'm gonna do one more example because complete the square can get a little trickier than that. Just wanna make sure you're ready for it. One more example of this. Let's talk about two X squared plus two Y squared plus two Z squared 
minus 6x minus 4y plus 2z equals 1. Try to show that this is a sphere. You can pause the video, try to complete the square, everything. I'll say right real quick, 2, 2, 2. X squared, Y squared, Z squared. That's a very good sign. It's a sphere. It's a very good sign. It'll work out. It also means we'd rather have the coefficients be 1, 1, 1. That's how spheres look usually. So one of the first things I would do if I was solving this problem is divide everything by 2. And it's very nice that things work out this way on this side. On this side, things work out nicely. On the other side, you're going to start having a messy little fraction, but it's not that bad. Pause the video. Make sure you can finish it now. X squared minus 3X plus a blank. Think about what would go there. Y squared minus 2Y plus a blank. It's always going to be plus a blank. Z squared plus Z plus blank equals one half. So what do we need to complete the square with the x's? Half of negative three is three halves, nine fourths. Make sure you add that to the other side. Negative one squared is positive one. Half of z, sorry, half of one z is one half z. So we're talking about one fourth here. And we're making sure we add one fourth to the other side. x minus 3 halves, y minus 1, z plus 1 half, almost messed that up, which is equal to 2 fourths plus 9 fourths is 11 fourths, plus 4 fourths is 15 fourths, and another fourth makes 16 fourths or four. So what we have here is an equation of a sphere with the center at three halves, one negative one half, and whose radius is the square root of four, which is two. It's a very nice number. So we're gonna do one more example of a sphere. Right now, just make sure you understand why I got the coordinates I did for the center, why one of them is negative, like how to read that, and again, that the radius is not half of the other number, it's the square root. So let's do one more example of a sphere. Find an equation of a sphere with a at 2, negative 3, 4, and b, 3, comma 2, comma 1, at opposite ends of a diameter. So if you're watching along at home and you feel like So if you're watching along at home and you feel like you have an idea of what to do, why don't you go ahead and try to do it? I'll guide you along, but feel free to pause. What we need for any sphere, for any sphere equation, we need a center and a radius. My next hint would be what the word diameter means is still what it would mean in a sphere. So the diameter, right, I'll just draw a circle. The diameter goes across the circle and it's twice the length of the radius, cough, 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 which means that the center of the diameter is the center of the circle. I'll say it differently. The midpoint of the diameter is the midpoint of a circle. So we'll find the center by using the midpoint formula. And since I'm using the midpoint formula for the first time, I'll write it out. 
2 plus 3 over 2, negative 3 plus 2 over 2, 4 plus 1 over 2, and we got some ugly numbers here, 5 halves, negative 1 half, and then 5 halves again. And the radius should be half the length of the diameter. You could use the center and find the distance from the center to one of these endpoints. What you should probably do is just find the length of diameter. So the diameter is going to be the length from A to B which is 2 minus 3 squared plus negative 3 minus 2 squared plus 4 minus 1 squared, which is uh, 1 plus 25 plus 9 is uh, 34, 35. So the radius would be half of that square root of 35 over 2. The 2 is not inside the square root. So now we can make an equation. We can make an equation. x minus 5 halves squared plus y plus a half squared plus z minus 5 halves squared equals 35 fourths. Make sure you understand where I got that radius number. That's it for spheres. Have a nice day.